So you're an independent candidate for governor, which suggests you don't think either major party has it right. That's right. I, I think both parties, for different reasons, uh, you know, they're tied to the status quo and special interests, which happens when you come up through the party system. And we need solutions that break free of the status quo. What's the driving issue, driving force in your campaign? Well, it's really Jeff for jobs, that job growth is the number one thing that r lifts people out of poverty. So that's what I'm focused on first and foremost. That's what I've been doing the last 27 years of my life and my business career, growing private sector jobs. But almost everything is integrated into jobs, whether it's education, transportation, health care. Uh, it's all part of the same pot, if you will. So you have to focus on all the issues. Let me backtrack into that a little bit. The role of government. What is the role of government? I don't think the role of government is to guarantee outcomes because that's unsustainable. We don't have infinite resources. I think the role of government, certainly part of it's regulatory to make sure businesses don't, you know, eat their own young, if you will. But the other role of government is to create as much opportunity across the board as possible. So if you create opportunities for small businesses to grow, which is where the vast majority of job growth comes from, then you're going to have a thriving economy. Let me come back to job creation for a moment. Uh, businesses tell us that there is a skills gap. Mm -hmm. They can't find the trained workers yeah. they need to fill the openings they have. What's your answer to that? Well, I think, I think businesses are right that, that in many cases it is tough to find suitable employees. As you know, we've got about 100,000 job openings and twice that many unemployed people in the Commonwealth right now. So one of the things government uh, could be very helpful in is working with business in partnership, as you mentioned, to analyze what are the jobs that are going to be out there in the future and where do we need to educate kids, you know, what particular areas. And this includes having stronger high schools and uh, strong technical and community colleges, strong uh, a, a state college and university system as well, right on, right on up, the, up the ladder. It's very, very important. And we've got to give kids the skills they need for a 21st century economy. Uh, is that a tough job, though, to predict what's going to be coming down the pike in the job market 10 or 15 years from now? Well, I've spent hours this morning with a robotics company, and they can tell you right now what they know they're going to need. And supposedly 65% of the tech jobs that, um, that people will need, there are very few of those now, and there's going to be, you know, the vast majority, two, about two-thirds of the jobs in, in the future. So they can look forward. They, they, you know, they, they can anticipate their needs very well. That's what you need to do to run a business. One of the cornerstones of your campaign is a proposal to roll back the income tax to 5%. How would you do that? Well, I think that we can get there, and I know we can get there, just through attrition. Uh, governor Patrick added 10,000 jobs over the seven years where he was, he was governor. Uh, and just through normal attrition, over four years, um, we could scale that back so that we could have a 5% income tax, which is what we promised people in the Commonwealth 25 years ago. Uh, aren't we getting there anyway, though, with these triggers that uh, the legislature passed for what, at 5.2%? Yeah, so we're getting there very slowly. But the point is, if we allow for, for more attrition and just don't immediately fill a job just because that job is there. We need to look and see, do we really need that job, especially with technology? Because if you employ technology, it will make government more efficient. The income tax generates between 50 and 60 percent of all state revenue. Can mm -hmm. we afford to cut it? Well, again, through attrition, because then you obviously have a corresponding, um, you have a corresponding uh, savings as, as far as the employees. That's the key. You tie it to the attrition so that as, as normal attrition happens, it goes down. Well, I get that, but there are also a lot of things coming down the pike. Sure. Infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Where do you find the money to rebuild roads and bridges? Oh, there's no, there's no question there's a number of areas, including early childhood education. I'll add, I add that one to the list. We have to do things like incarceration reform. Uh, there's no question in my mind in talking to sheriffs that there's tremendous savings opportunities there. We just have to rethink some of the... Um, uh, you know, the three strikes are out and such that we put in place, you know, a couple of decades ago. Um, there are areas that we just don't use technology uh, like we should. DCF, obviously, we saw that they were woefully lacking in technology. But we also need to get savings in areas like health care. It's 42% of the state's budget.
new governors have to submit a strategic uh, economic development policy statement. Key elements of yours, what's in it? Well, uh, savings in health care is absolutely essential. Um, we have to do that because that is hurting small business growth. And if, if we really want job job growth, that's you know that's a critical critical area. We're the uh, fifth highest energy costs in the United States. That's something again that we need to look at because if we want to bring manufacturing, especially manufacturing jobs, which would be tremendous for so many gateway cities, again we've got to get our manufacturing costs under control. And there are ways of doing it, and frankly, we're doing it in the private sector. Um, the government tends not to think like a large consumer, which they are, uh, and also government doesn't think of, of these progressive steps um, to support businesses the way they should. So we've elected, how do we hold you accountable to those? Well, I, I'll tell you right now, uh, healthcare, I know exactly some of the models I'd like to employ uh, with team-based medicine, um, population health management, um, no question about that. And, uh, and on the energy side, again, as I said, we're doing that in the private sector. We're also using technology and education, teaching millions of kids math throughout the United States. They get much higher math scores, 41 different states use it. Um, that's the kind of thing that we need to start doing in our urban schools.